but just looking at the, the general discussion summary, <coughs> I think this would be an excellent way to start just kind of going about our debate from now on. I would encourage us to uh, get into a discussion about nationality and citizenship as we have started that. Um, we are not codifying essentially treaties or debts. While those are certainly a very important part of what we're doing and we have to examine how those things have been dealt with, what we are actually codifying is Delix, is nationality and citizenship, and dealing with IOs. And I think we need to really try and focus our conversation to those areas, even if it does apply to uh, other ways that things like treaties and debts can be dealt with. Doctor, and you're a doctor from Costa Rica. You say, I want to learn about family planning. I say, okay, so this is contraceptives. These are the ones you can use. This is how you use them. This is how you teach your people to use them. That, that's um, I don't know about you guys, but I can still feel the elevator. I'm kind of confused about what's going on in this committee. Um, I thought that our purpose was to talk about the refugees and to talk about um, you know, how to get people either back into their country or to help them live where they are in the country. So far, I haven't heard ed practically anything about any of that. Um, all I've heard, you know, mostly about speaking time. But um, I'd like to say, I forget who said it a really long time ago, but I agree that UNEP should be taking care of the environmental problem. That's really not within our jurisdiction. I grant it is a problem, but I think we should recommend that UNEP take care of that. And um, as far as relocation and repatriation, um, a big concern has been with uh, funding. Well, I know of an organization, probably none of you have heard of it, the PAIDC, which is uh, funded by uh, regional Islamic banks. Oh, sorry. Okay. The uh, acronym for it is the Popular Arab Islamic Development Conference, which is funded by the Islamic um, regional banks, which basically could provide funding for just about anything we want because they're completely <laughs> uncapped the resource. They have all this money, but nobody a little muscle, a little energy. I understand the part of the same. I mean, they're the same in the sense that everyone gets the money. I agree with you that. I'm not saying that with your pot, no one's going to get money because I'm sure they'll get the money. But my problem is that the. But if you also think of it, if you educate another college university, then you can stand. Sudan strongly supports the first resolution. We feel that the commission of the three, like the OAU and UNHCR and the Congo, is not infringing on Congo's sovereignty at all. They have a say in what is happening, and we feel that it's important. And we just wanted to let this be known today that we are a neighbor of Entirely domestic. A U I have Sudan. Thank you, Elliot. You have a minute. All right, thank you, Dan, for the gracious deal. I want to talk about the internet. That seems to be uh, a lot of people's problem. Um, just to give you a couple examples of what the free press has done in not even the last three days, uh, I went on the internet, and you'd be surprised to think you can find. I found how to make anthrax in my kitchen. I can make uh, nuclear weapons, uh, napalm. These are all, you know, commonplace on the internet. I mean, it, it didn't take me a few minutes just to type these in. I mean, I could find more pornography than I could ever look at within five minutes. Um, on the way to breakfast this morning, another example, flyers are handed out and I'm bombarded on every street corner by flash dancers and strip clubs. I mean, this, this kind of things cannot happen in Sudan. Um, I mean, for example, look at President Clinton. He's been, you know, on this, in the spotlight for, for so long about this sex scandal. And I just have something to show you. This is uh, one of the American uh, journalists right here, the star. And what does it say? Clinton caught on tape, frolic with White House blonde. This is not acceptable in our country, and it will never be. I mean, these, 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 is this what your free press is? We don't want the free press in Sudan. Thank you. Hi, Missy. Like, oh, yeah. My foot for the trip to the house. That's it. Like, sucks. <laughs>
shot here. Now, see, there's Liz waving. Liz, will, will you reach over and shake the ambassador's hand? Wouldn't that be wonderful? All right. Thank you. We have one more time. Oh, shake the hands. Okay. Is that good? of the art on the wall. The art is clearly a symbol of chaos. <laughs> or at least it's what we're feeling right now is chaos. I think it's for peace. You're so right. Would you say it again? Well, no. Okay. 
No, good answer. Thank you. That you really don't want to know, and he's in who, okay? Oh, His name is Aaron. Oh, no. hi. He's in yours, okay. That was scary. Okay. Yeah, we committed a heinous crime. We ate food in the UN building. We ate, we ate an entire box of Winter, Winter, Winter Green Tic Tacs. We ate them. And, it's, we're gonna, and look, this, our other friend. Uh oh. Crime. I'm about to be committed. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, we put video evidence. You're going to jail, man. This is the painting inside the United Nations. We're going to talk to some people and see what they think it is. That painting. That is a nude painting. That is a nude painting of a... A woman or a man? Actually, I think people in 2011, I think it's from Arizona. Because our group got split up. It was really weird. We have like, don't know. I've been thinking about it, and I really don't think you want to know what's been going through my mind of what could that actually be. But then we're in the UN building, so I don't think it really is any of that stuff. So, that's fine. What do you think that is, Mr. Shumano? Clearly a go-go dancer accident. Would you care to explain? No. I see. What do you Can you please explain what you think the picture is? Person missing an arm, missing a leg, in the background of a flag. I would say that it's two nudes rusty. Out Kelly Porter. What do you want to say it again? You don't want it's to be me, you know, like uh, stuff in the wire and I don't know. Picture right there. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's really freaking ugly. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's some crap that they couldn't paint over because they don't have enough funds. You know why? Because the United States doesn't pay its bills, baby. Go in. That porch is my bag. Naked women all over. My bag. Beautiful. Picture it again. Naked women. Corner of my mind. 
I can't work with her. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege for me, on behalf of Secretary General Kofi Annan, to welcome you to the General Assembly. The seats you fill, representing 185 member nations, could not have better occupants than tonight. The energy, idealism, and intelligence you bring to this session is truly an inspiration. I want you to know that we consider the model UN around the world to be among the best friends of the United Nations. We consider you our ally. And so it is an honor for me to come and, and speak to you tonight and launch your session of the model United Nations. I'm privileged also to express my respect and my admiration for the preparation you've gone through, for the training, for the study, for the learning about each country that you will represent, and of course, for the learning about this organization. And at a time when there are difficult moments and critics and skeptics of the UN, it is a joy for us to know that you are here because you care, and that you understand because you have made the effort to study and to learn about this place. Loud and clear. It is coming up in Congress again in the next month or so, and your voice would make a difference. And finally, let me say that I hope you will find this uh, an enlightening and inspiring experience. I know you will experience uh, some of the frustrations and the difficulties of working toward consensus. You will have the challenge of expressing other views and crossing those bridges that you have built, and you will have the satisfaction of arriving at some joint conclusions that can move us forward. Thank you for doing that, and thank you for considering that in whatever work you choose, and by whatever studies you pursue, you will always think global. You will remember that this organization is at work for all of us, and as you act in your work and in your life, you will recall that we are here as one human race. Thank you all, and good luck on your session. We dealt with all the regional fighting and all the environmental issues. Um, I think that one of the most important things to do right now is to deal with the uh, plot that displaced people in the former CIS nation. And uh, one thing that we, the student feels that the fastest way to do that and probably the most effective way is to um, say to pretty much say to all the slots of people in those areas, um, if you want to go back to Russia, you can go back. And that would require the assessment of a couple of programs. One that was, uh, as we were about Belgium brought up, was um, an employment program, bringing, uh, because most of the people are teachers and doctors anyway, um, finding them employment and then the IOM to build houses. And uh, I'd like to yield the rest of the time to Dr. Cutter. So in Egypt, what's the emotion you had? I need to be addressed. I I again just to echo the sentiments of what I think we hear about the table. I agree that all of those are legitimate forms of discussion. I think that's pretty much agreed upon and we need to get beyond that now. Um, just looking at the, the general discussion summary, <coughs> I think this would be an excellent way to start just kind of going about our debate from now on. I would encourage us to uh, get into a discussion about nationality and citizenship as we can start with that. Um, we are not codifying essentially treaties or debts, while those are certainly a very important 
part of what we're doing and we have to examine how those things have been dealt with. What we are actually codifying is DELIX, is nationality and citizenship, and dealing with IOs. And I think we need to really try and focus our conversation to those areas, even if it does apply to uh, other ways that, that things like treaties and that's together. I, I also agree with the working paper about mad cow disease, which involves taking all infected cows from like Europe, putting them in Cambodia and Afghanistan and various other mines, and having them run through the rice fields so that they blow up, so that you eliminate mines, you eliminate mad cow disease, you, the land gets plowed, the land gets into their country 
or to help them live where they are in the country. So far, I haven't heard any, practically anything about any of that. Um, all I've heard, you know, mostly about speaking time. But um, I'd like to, to make a comment. I agree. I forget who said it a really long time ago, but I agree that do not should be taking care of the environmental problem. That's really not within our jurisdiction. I granted it is a problem, but I think we should recommend that do not take care of that. And um, as far as relocation and repatriation, um, a big concern has been with uh, funding. Well, I know of an organization, probably none of you have heard of this, the PAIDC, which is uh, funded by uh, regional Islamic banks. Oh, sorry. Okay. The uh, African Accord and Popular Arab Islamic Development Conference, which is funded by the Islamic um, regional banks, which basically could provide funding for just about anything we want because they're using you know, the resource. They have all this money that nobody knows about. Uh, I think that um, it is important that we put something in the agenda about dealing with the environment. I don't believe it's our first to say, um, ideas, just nobody wants to cooperate. So even though we're all saying the same thing, we're disagreeing anyways. And the 15 working papers we've got floating around all say the same thing, but somehow we can't agree on one of them. We can't even agree on five of them. What are they saying? Pretty much uh, recommending various types of privatization to whoever. And mostly what they want is a referral service to... Um, they're not condemning Israel for their actions. Israel should be condemned. Yeah, hasn't, hasn't. That's what I'm saying. But Palestine, mm -hmm. they want to condemn Palestine. What are you looking for? And Palestine has done a lot less than Israel. And they can't really condemn Palestine because Palestine is not a state. Because, one, they didn't, they haven't paid their dues. I mean, and they're one of the key people in the Mali United Nations. They have veto power. And now they've basically almost what? They're questioning their... What are you trying to, what are you trying to get accomplished? Well, uh, oh, great. Uh, I, I basically want to, um, since so many records are being altered because of drugs and stuff like that, I want to have the UN basically, I uh, kind of monitor, monitor it, I guess, you know, like once we're talking about women's sexuality in theocratic states. Mm -hmm. What the role should be. What do we? Uh, okay, okay, guys. We're talking about whether or not they should be allowed to, you know, join the workforce. Or <coughs> I mean, uh, we're taking the standpoint of Sudan that they belong, you know, in the family. They're the key players. They, you know, really anchor society and. We want to keep them there. And these Western people, you know, these countries come in with their ideological imperialism and try to, you know, push their views on us and force their ways on us. And we're not going to stand for it because the Quran tells us that, you know, if you sit on your butt and let you, you know, your ideas be trampled, then you're nothing. And we're not going to allow that to happen. Good. Yet man says, when I am dead, will I come to life again? Fixing something. 
Does man not remember that before we created him, he was nothing? <laughs> By your Lord we shall gather them and the devils together, then bring them crawling on their knees around hell. We shall pull out of every section those who are most perversely rebellious against our Raham. Yeah, lots of support from. Let's see, this is what I find kind of interesting. We have lots of support from. We got I mean, Uganda, uh, Hungary, Djibouti, a lot of the smaller countries, you know, Iran. And yet we see, you know, some of the other side being the larger, more industrialized Western countries, you know, France, uh, Germany, Italy. You know, they, they really haven't came over and you know, offered the olive branch to peace. They haven't came and you know, discussed it with me. You know, came out of that was good. But, but, you know, pushing the Palestinians into a corner, and that would be a resolution. But that's not the resolution. There's no law. Law. So, until uh, equal rights are achieved, the Palestinian problem is solved. Yeah. Yeah. Just combine them both. I think they have to be a huge support for all. Every idea is good. But we have to vote as a block. We have to unite for my brother. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I think I don't think about that. I mean, I think I think about that. I mean, I think I don't think about that. I mean, I think I don't I don't I can't see how to get them to help us. I can't see how to get the other three groups to combine their ideas. And I can't see how to get those three groups to work with the Chad, Uruguay, Costa Rica group because I like that. They're good. <laughs> but we can, however, encourage bilateral and multilateral agreements among the three groups. Because that's what we have been doing for decades. Customized modular health data program. 
you do not have to choose that if your country does not believe in it or it's not part of your health care system. We are trying to compromise between nations knowing that some nations will not have something that that's not incorporated. Analogy, the way this plan is set up, we're figuring that the third world nations will start from the basic and work their way up. And then obviously the technology will not be something that they will choose to do until they have the sufficient other basic to work for them. Way too many people like have the exact same ideas when they talk to each other because their countries don't like each other. So they think that they have like totally different views, but they don't, and it's really annoying. Really annoying. And we like we try to get involved in the, the. There's one resolution that's like everything that we want, and we like given them a few ideas for it. We try to get involved, but they don't even like. They won't even acknowledge that we're like there, so we're like not a part of it, and we never get to talk and. Too big and, it's and I think never put anything out. There's like 20,000 amendments on the floor, but yeah, we have none of them in our hands. We're supposed to copy them down. They're like, once you can copy down like five pages worth of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really annoying. We have to wait for like two hours to get like, like a paragraph for an amendment. Do you think uh, when they get into a, a real GA situation, like in the UN, they have 185 countries plus observer states there, everything else, I think that they, would give them, they I think have they similar would frustrations? Give they, oh, for the paperwork. I think that if they would just get like an overhead projector and like write it down or something and just have it on the wall, it would be so much easier. It would like they waste so much paper, and it's really annoying. Megan, this is now action. <laughs> So what do you think about New York, Mr. Janelle? It's everything I thought this city would be. Good or bad? Or both? It's everything I thought this city would be. <laughs> That's a cheap answer. That's my diplomat speaking. My little diplomacy. Uh, I would say that this has been a, a terrific week for visits. Uh, there's not a chance I would want to stay here for any longer than we have. Never? But Kevin Bacon's here. I'm, well... See, I, Kevin's cute, but he's, he's not it for me. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Oh, parliamentary procedure and our committee just went totally out the window. Everything has gotten left up to the chair's discretion so far. And we really haven't voted on anything except whether to move back and forth from moderated caucus to formal debate. And <laughs> that's pointless because they're exactly the same. We don't, they're not allowing questions or yields or anything, so there really is no difference besides having an established speaking list. And, um, <laughs> Sudan, mostly, our policy is getting all screwed up because none of the Islamic nations are acting Islamic. They're sort of United States teenagers acting like they're in UN, but not taking country roles, which kind of smacks someone. Why is that frustrating but, uh, to you, then? <laughs> because they're really taking after United States policy, which is, you know, to encourage World Bank and encourage all those evil things that Sudan really isn't very fond of at the moment. But, um, and also the simple fact of they've, I mean, I'm really proud of them. They found a thesaurus somewhere because they came up with seven amendments that say exactly the same thing. And <laughs> they somehow keep insisting that all of them are different, but um, I'm convinced only the actual wording is different. They say exactly the same thing. If we could put all our dilatory amendments into one pile, it could make a stack from here to the moon. ago, the resolution, the amendment that you really wanted, failed. Yeah. Two resolutions that you really wanted to fail, passed. Yeah. The resolution you really wanted to pass, failed. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Why? Because, like, okay, so 
the UAE gets really mad because we put family planning in there, and yet all the big countries are like, hey, great, we can pick family planning if we want to or not. So what do we have? We have the support of France, the United States, even though they're off policy, and that's okay, Canada, I, I, the huge countries that like ha hardly ever support Sudan are all for this whole bull stuff that we're doing, and yet all the little countries that should be in support of it are like, oh, let's go for the confusing crap that we just passed. And it doesn't make any sense. And then ours was totally like the modular. Like anybody understands the word modular? I was just about ready to put the definition up there because nobody seems to understand it. And it went, oh, God. And the, two, and the two that passed, they're like so similar. And number three was great. We were total support. And then Germany goes in there and starts talking about removing the placenta afterwards. Like you don't already do that in manual. Like the doctors don't already do that. And we have to actually state that, that they're going to do this. Hello, they're trained to do that. Why do we actually have to write it down on paper? Ugh. Do you get the impression from the overwhelming failure in the vote? Do you get the impression that uh, Sudan has similar problems in the United Nations, or are they different? I think they have similar problems in the United Nations, except in the United Nations, the U.S. knows its policy and doesn't ask us how we feel nor supports us. So, in some ways here, it's quite nice, and in other ways, it just really bites. <laughs> you've, been in, you've been in Model United Nations for four years. You've built our team. You're here in the closing hours of National High School Model UN. You brought us here to New York. You're responsible for all this, and you have only a few hours left of debate for Model UN in high school. How are you feeling? You're making me cry. <laughs> I feel like I was so pissed off about that. Now you're going off on this. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like we've come a lot farther than, what, the eight people that we started with? And now we were up to 30-some, and we've had failures along the way. But it's to be expected when we've only been here for four years. But I also think that, that even though, you know, some people come here just as their first time thing, I think that we've actually done the best by working our way up. And even if you're a first-year delegate, you still work your way up to get here. And we're proving that no matter where we are, that we're one of the strongest teams here, and that's because we've done so much to get here. And no matter if we come back here every year, or if we go to Chicago or other places, that we'll do just as good as we have. How important has Model UN been to you? Okay, well, let's see. How many hours are there in a day, and how many hours do I spend at school? Uh, excluding two or three hours for sleep, a couple hours for eating pretty important. And if it wasn't that important, I wouldn't have been Secretary General for three years. Are you going to miss it? <laughs> so, so far we're trying to, um, our main thing is to get an Israeli apology for the crimes that they've committed against all of Islam, including countries that are not completely Islamic like Lebanon, I don't believe Syria is completely Islamic either. We want an apology because Israel has been not very nice to these neighbors of theirs, and when they're not nice to any Islamic person, any Muslim, they are um, turning against all of Islam, and since we're primarily an Islamic nation, we're not very happy with that. Has it been working? It's starting to. We finally have some support. So Saudi Arabia is on our side. We're trying to get something started there. Um, I, I spoke with Iran. They are slightly on a slightly different plane. They want to set up a democracy of all things, multi-ethnic society going there that will have all that territory, including all, the entire is is all of Israel. West Bank and the Gaza Strip would be part of a multi-ethnic society, and the Syrian Golan would become part of Syria again. Does that sound like the, like Iranian policy to you? Not quite. <laughs> uh, they, earlier they told me, it is, earlier it seemed like they wanted to the eradication of the Israeli state, which is something that we would all like to see happen. I mean, why should they be there? They don't belong there in the first place. So had this, this success right, in getting a uh, resolution on the floor, or at least a working paper working, and the committees re respond, respond yeah. to it. 27 new signatories, and it has been accepted as a resolution now, and now they're just going to make copies. Mm -hmm. It's taking a lot of work. 
What'd you have to do? One, we had some trouble with um, the Arab nations holding to foreign policy, so we kind of had to stick the Koran in their face and make them hold up their foreign policy, which is usually unusual. They're starting to come around now? Mm-hmm. So are you saying that Sudan has taken on a key role in Islam? Yes. How so? How so? Making them hold foreign policy with supporting <coughs> and condemning Israel and a lot of other stuff. That's what we've had to do. We've had to persuade a lot of countries, especially the African countries, and it's worked. What's kind of important about the addendum for you, for Sudan? Well, for Sudan or for the committee? You know, from your perspective, what do you think is most important about this addendum that you created? Well, I think one of the most important things in the addendum that we're talking about is not setting a precedent for any other situations. The situation in the CIS that we're dealing with right now in our addendum is only for that situation. It doesn't have anything to do with um, situations where there are refugees or internally displaced people anywhere else in the world, only in the CIS. Kind of suggest that uh, there are no lessons to be learned from what we do. There's nothing not a, you say, we always say that you can learn from history and all that, and we should be trying to find uh, common ties from region to region, but you're saying that's not true. Well, in a lot of cases it is true, but in some cases it isn't, where they try, some uh, committees try certain things, like, say, like safe zones. In some um, situations, safe zones are perfect, and they'll work very well because this region is very stable and the governments are very legitimate, but in some cases where there's just chaos and there's war, a safe zone just won't work and uh, other uh, like rebel factions can use those safe zones as their advantage. They can take uh, hostages and that sort of thing. Cool. Okay, go ahead. Tell me about the uh, trip to uh, the Sudanese embassy. Who did you meet there? What, what was it like? Well, first, the trip to the Sudanese embassy was kind of difficult to, I mean, finding the place was, was a whole adventure in itself. But once we found the place, and we came in, and they were, you know, they were like, oh, wow. And they were, you know, they were really receptive to, you know, all the students coming in. And they seated us pretty quickly. And we got to meet, like, the actual guy. I mean, you know, the big guy. He came in, and he was, he was cool. And then, uh, then they sent in some of the, <coughs> the, uh, oh, just some of the other people that work with them. They were special ambassadors. Some of the other special ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And... They began with, you know, the history of Sudan, a lot of stuff that we knew, and then they, then they started to discuss specific issues. And, you know, a lot of things I was just like, yeah, that's exactly what I thought they would say, you know. That's exactly what I'm going to say. That's what I said today. I mean, you know, that's what I'm planning to say tonight. And then certain things, you know, they could answer questions that were, you know, so specific that, and you didn't have to, you know, it was great you didn't have to explain to them. I mean, these, these people actually, they knew what they were doing. And they spoke so, you know, they were, they were so calm. They were always, you know, really polite. They never got, you know, agitated. There was no questions. I think we're really at, you know, what are you talking about? I've never heard of this. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. They were, you know, they were, they were friendly. They told us about their country. You know, they gave us, they gave us more than just, the, you know, the political views. They told us about their culture and how, how the people act, and you know how, how it's a great place. It's, you know, it's not as bad as this Western countries make it out to be. A resolution does nothing, which is what we wanted to do, because we feel that the environmental issues are touchy subject and that any more laws or restrictions that are placed on undeveloped, war-torn countries would invade on their sovereignty, and we would like to know from other delegations how they feel a war-torn, undeveloped country can uphold laws and regulations on environmental damage during arms, or dimes of armed conflict. Thank you. And what the topic is that you're frustrated with? Well, the only topic we've really gotten to is the environment, and it's such a controversial topic, and you can almost say that the whole room is divided almost in half because you've got the Western powers and you've got the Eastern. And if everybody stayed in policy, it would be really fun because we could yell at each other like that. And you've got, like, Indonesia who can't decide what policy they want to follow, even though they're fellow Islamic brothers. And you've got Palestine, who's so radically Islamic, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got me who's trying to stay in policy. And the, the, the more people who stay in policy, the more it gets other people to stay in policy. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. is not staying in policy, so it's really hard to decide what to sign. Because if you've got the U.S. name on it, you don't know if they're signing U.S. policy or if they're just going with the crowd. Last thing. 
Tell me a little bit about the embassy trip, your, the meeting with the ambassadors. What did you think about that? That was cool. I got to shake his hand. I got both cards and two magazines. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you find them to be as, as radical and extreme as, as you might have expected? What they were they like? Well, I've had experience with people from the Middle East before because my dad used to tutor uh, Arabic students in English, so I know all about the hospitality and the, mm -hmm. they like to serve me drinks and stuff like that. And they were very, I don't know, unradical, I guess, and very polite. And they did do some question dodging, but for the most part, they were, they were extremely helpful. I think they might have been a little flattered. Cool. Well, um, what I saw is that the basic problem was that the, the committee was getting off base. We began touching down on subjects that just they really weren't relevant to it. So I decided, you know, I was really nervous about it and everything, but I decided to go up there and I made a speech and pretty much what I did is I, is I addressed the Islamic community and I said, um, if, if, you're, if you aren't condemning is, uh, Israel for their actions, you are turning your back on your faith and you need to get back on track. At, at that point, um, I addressed the entire United Nations and I said, you know what is morally right, and negotiating with the enemy, it's not morally right, and that is exactly what this paper is opposed to, and it's up to you to decide what you know is right, and that's what I'm asking you to do. What was the response? The response was a standing ovation. Yeah. Doesn't happen a lot in committee. No. Very impressive. Yeah. I was pretty happy, actually. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I'm on Press Corps, which is a small special committee of people who go and report on a certain committee. I um, am reporting on UNHCR, and I'm finding it really interesting. And I've written um, two articles so far, and our third article is due tonight for the paper. And it's fun to see your article in the paper because you're one of the only delegates that actually get recognized because all 2,000 delegates received the paper with your name on it. And
over. Tell us about it. The week is over. We're just about to wrap up. Uh, here we are in General Assembly plenary to wrap up our last three days of committee work. We have one resolution in particular that we're really, really hoping to get passed. This is the end all. They've done a great job. This is exciting. This is, this is as good as it gets. Right here. We've got a plane in a couple of hours. So, this has been a great trip. time we've ever been to National High School Model of the United Nations. Yeah. Oh yes, here's the award. First time we've ever been there. Uh, this, is a, this is an award of merit saying that the entire delegation worked together to represent Sudan's policy, the best that it ever should have been represented. Ow! That's exactly right. And oh yes, there it is, more visual aids. Uh, it's great for great for a first appearance to come to National High School Model UN and do that kind of a job. That's the award we wanted to get. That's what we got. But I think most of all, 
despite the crippling defeats that we suffered in plenary, thank you, despite all the defeats we suffered in Ecosoc and all those places, we fought the good fight, and if not the good fight, at least the Sudanese fight, and that's what was, that's what we had to do, and we were excited about doing it, I think we still are excited. Thank you. Show our wings. Oh, we destroyed them. Fly, they were like nothing. Go, go, go. Go. Give your statement. I already gave my statement actually in General Assembly, but uh, I will say the same thing. Very proud of you guys. Very excited that we came here and had such a good showing. I'm sorry. What else? How'd you get here? Hi, Megan. Is it on? Yes, it is. Did you enjoy your time in New York, Megan? Oh, of course. I love the city. It smells sometimes in the morning. Like when we went to the UN building this morning, like it smells like Megan garbage. Like crap. Oh. What? Yeah, stop hitting me! Later. Would you stop with the Sudan stuff? Can I hang on to them for a minute? Lots of sadness. Mr. Chisnell's running off. He's a mad bummer. See, if Jen was here, she'd be crying with me. That's the thing. Jen is crying right now. Good. That's the important. Okay, I missed the award. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, comments on this last oh my God. invitation of uh, <laughs> NHS 98? Yes. Yeah. What's that? No. Let me see it real quick. We got the damn award. I was gonna say I was gonna say the other word, but I figured "damn" wasn't as bad of a word as the word I was gonna say. We got the award. What the award? Got the award. All right. You know what that means? The award. I don't think there's that thing anymore. Damn, your face is. Can I say that on on the camera? No, you may not. For all of you that are listening, the delegate. Go ahead. All right. Well, I was on the international law committee, which is it's very different from other committees. Yeah. Um, hey, good we job. reached all of our ideas by consensus, especially so it's compromise is such an essential part that the debate gets very, very heated. Um, awesome. We dealt with, with international laws of nationality and dealing with succession of states, which is extremely complicated. Um, we ended up making uh, a 12-page codification that only really just barely begun to scratch on, on what we wanted it to, but it was very successful. It's some extremely intellectual Lord, debate Lord, from that Lord, committee. Islamic tribe from Sudan. Look in there. Islamic art. I had no idea what to expect. It was, some of the stuff was just so gorgeous, so detailed. There's just one room. It was, it looked like it could have been the outside of a courtyard. There's cushions all the way around it with a mosaic tiled floor and with like little tiny tiled, a little bubbling fountain. You just picture some sheiks and there was like 50 women and bowls of wine and grapes all over the floor. And like it was designed for the sake of pure geometric design. It was just, some of the stuff was just so gorgeous, gold inlay, and carpet the size of the wall with uh, 50, like 500 silk threads per square inch tied individual individual knots. It was amazing. You don't see stuff like that. I've never, I've never seen anything like it before. No.
jet or airplane, four, bus, or I mean, I'm sorry, train or subway, five, bus, six, uh, cabs or vans, seven, volunteer drivers, eight, Mr. Chisel, Mr. Snyder. Number three, we demand that walking not be considered as a means of transportation for distances of more than one block. We highly recommend snacks and beverages be served for all journeys consisting of longer than 15 minutes in length. Five, further requests that wet your business attire not be required for travel as it is uncomfortable, especially the footwear. If you look at these shoes, they're not, they're not comfy. These are not walking shoes. Right? Urges. All journeys take place in temperatures between 60 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit on mildly sunny days without the possibility of snow, hail, rain, or other natural disasters. We strongly support the division of large groups. Now one please note as they get to this turn off the path of the seatbelt line indicating our initial approach into Detroit. As long as the path of the seatbelt line is on, we ask that you Oh, you're a jerk, 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 you're a jer